listening to White the Truck. Yeah. Are you ready to truck it? I'm doing her here with Michael Vincent, the dude. Welcome to Monday, brother. Right on, brother. It's a not so beautiful winter day here in Chattanooga, but it's about to be. It's going to be 67 and sunny tomorrow, brother. Are you ready? I'm ready, but you know why? Because this is episode 259 of What the Truck. Now, that's an off number. You're not really going to celebrate that, but you know what? This is also episode 1000 that's going to be uploaded to Freightcast. So, nice. Little cowbell. Nice. Little cowbell. Got to have it. 1000 episodes. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad for little feet. Go to your favorite podcast. You get Freightcast. You get every single Freightways podcast all on one feed. On today's show, we're going to be talking about optimizing your freight sales with Zembles, how Relay Payments' $43 million raise is helping truckers get paid faster, and giving back with St. Christopher's Truckers Relief Fund. Let's talk about something first. I saw a video. I sent a video over the weekend, and we're going to play it in just a second here. But there's two types of vehicles I tend to do everything I can to avoid, and those are uh, you know, landscaping cars with like loose equipment in the back. You see some wrenches or some uh, lawnmowers or a shovel rattling around. I'm moving over. Or car haulers. When you see a car hauler, I always fear that one's going to fall off and crash right into me. You got any, uh, you got sort of any final destination premonitions like that when you're driving? <laughs> yeah, car haulers, not so much. They don't, I mean, yeah, a little bit. And But I, I know what you're talking about. The landscapers and stuff, when they're cruising down, especially with the smaller, almost uh, homemade trailers, those scare me a bit. But uh, flatbeds with the huge reels of steel on the back, dude. I just imagine when those are rolling off and just, boom, it's just a dead stop, right? Boom. This is, you know, yeah, those those scare me a little bit. Well, let's play the tape right here. We have a tape of this car hauler that was pulling some ambulances, right? And the ambulance uh, rolls right off the back of this truck. It's going right through traffic over there. And, um, you know, it's kind of a miracle the way that this thing rolls, Michael Vincent, that there weren't any cars right in the trajectory that it was going. God, that's insane how that thing comes off and just kind of glides right into the lane behind that guy in the back who's looking through his beer rear view mirror going what in the world is going on here holy cow yeah Absolutely. you know i heard i heard the resolution of this video and it's the uh the, the car hauler he did notice that the truck was going there and i don't have the full video but if you see it he does start going over to the right lane he eventually nudges it off the side of the road but um you know i had this up on facebook a lot of people made comments about how they thought this this went down they said uh dan the driver at road transportation he said I had always hoped that I'd never see that in the first person, but uh, practically every time an auto carrier passes me, he's like me. He's thinking about that one. Nick Bassalone, he says, Nick Bassalone says, I saw this in Bad Boys too. Mike, they throw in cars. Um, Damien McNamara at SNR Transportation, he says that it looks like it wasn't chained correctly and the driver was going way too fast. Hammer down and clueless, this driver could have killed someone. More safety training and slow the F down, you're giving truckers a bad name. He said he's hauled cars for 18 years, and he's never lost a single one. He four chains everything's, everything down. And Nathan Lewis said it looks like something out of an old spy movie. Just, just a wild video. And, uh, you know, keep your head on a swivel out there when you're driving. Keep your eyes open. You never know when a, you know, a runaway ambulance is going to come off that need its own ambulance. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now we just need a video of a car driving into an up onto a, a car hauler. That's a spy movie where they jump up onto the thing and, and hide right in the in the in the car yeah. chases. Or if but you just use it for a jump over the job. Oh, yeah. Well, to, yeah, but you would use it as a jump for a truck to take out a helicopter. I mean, that's the only way to do it. Right. I mean, Bruce Willis yeah. style. The other one is logs. Have you ever seen Final Destination 2? It has that like amazing opening scene where the logs fly off of the log hauler and just like murder everybody it's terrible it's terrible yeah they need to that's make not- they need to make more final destination movies like the best slasher the killer's fate like you can just bring it back every time you don't have to like come up with an excuse why jason came back no you don't there doesn't need to be an excuse it's just a good movie that's the excuse <laughs> well guys let's hit the, let's hit the band let's say thank you to our sponsor zimbles you want to crush your numbers so stop randomly prospecting zimbles can tell you who is spending on shipping and get you those leads instantly taking your sales process from a 95% failure rate to a 50% success rate. Go to start.zembles.com for a free trial and sign up for a demo today. We're actually going to be talking to a nice gentleman from there. But before we get there, headlines. All right. this We woke up to this news. This was, this was a surprising one. I think everyone did on Twitter. You know, UPS put out that. TFI is going to acquire UPS Freight for $800 million. I don't think you had that on your radar, did you? No, I did not. I did not have that square. 
Well, we don't have a ton of information on this one because, again, we uh, we didn't really see it coming. Nate Tabak reports that TFI International has agreed to acquire UPS Freight for about $800 million. The Canadian trucking and logistics company said on Monday, the deal represents TFI's largest acquisition to date. It will dramatically increase the size of the truckload and LTL footprint in America for TFI. Yeah, no doubt about it. Alan Baird uh, said, we're excited by this very attractive opportunity to extend our longstanding record of uh, successful growth through acquisitions, which will vault TFI International to one of the largest North American LTL carriers. Uh, but hey, stay on, uh, keep checking out FreightWaves.com and find out the developing story. As, as you said, Dooner, it's, it's still uh, developing. It was a shocker this morning. Nice. And we're back up on social. So uh, Cool Deep, he says, uh, hello. And James Fry says, good afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your time. You know, this is not completely out of character for TFI. They did pick up XBO's truckload division in 2016. So, you know, four and a half, almost five years ago, picked that up. So uh, looks like they're just trying to build out that presence and that footprint, just as the article said, right here in North America. Yeah, absolutely they are. Yeah, it'll be interesting. See what they do. TFI on a tear, LTL. Very nice. Here's a, here's a more crime for you. Sentencing date set for bookkeeper in a 700 700- thousand dollar trucking fraud scheme this happened in with a missouri woman she used the money to purchase jewelry a travel trailer vehicles and green bay packers tickets she's not going to need those or that trailer to go to the super bowl after sunday because uh the great tom brady man unparalleled we're living we're living in uh in you know we're living in the shadow of of legend in football it's just amazing it's amazing to see yeah a 20 years difference too i mean not to take away from the story right but 20 years difference between mahomes and, and brady yeah big deal Big deal. We'll get yeah. a big deal. It'll be cool to watch. Clarissa Hawes reports on uh, a February 5th sentencing date has been set for a bookkeeper who pled guilty to devising an elaborate scheme to defraud a family owned trucking company and farm in Missouri out of more than $700,000. Man, when these guys go thieving, they go thieving big. We, every time we cover the story, the, the numbers go up. Christine Diane Schultz is the woman. She's 34 of Washington, Missouri. She pled guilty in August to wire fraud, bank fraud, and money, la- money laundering charges in the Eastern District of Missouri. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Still not as big as a guy who tried to steal a million dollars over two weeks from a single grocery store. But federal prosecutors claimed Schultz, who worked as the bookkeeper and office manager at uh, Meshack Farms uh, Trucking, MFT, and Meshack Farms in New Haven, uh, Missouri, diverted nearly two, $727,000 in company funds over two years from January 2018 through February 2020. As part of her scheme, Schultz fought, uh, fraudulently and without permission used the company's credit cards for personal expenditures according to the court filing she also had american express and first bank issue her new credit cards in the farm and trucking company's names and charged more than 1800 transactions racking up more than five hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars on the credit cards doing lots of air miles yeah uh, derek staples and lisa mcdonald they were not shocking that um that ups tfi transaction either they're mentioning that in the comments over here uh what else did she do over here she was forging the owner's signature how did she accomplish this she was forging the owner's signature and several other company employee signatures on checks from several different bank accounts she faces 20 years in prison and a uh, 250 dollar fine on these wire charges um I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Crime seems like it doesn't pay, but you know, then you got to think about all the people who get away with it and uh, it just never comes up. Yeah. But, but I mean, still dude, <laughs> are you going to risk? Uh, I don't know for $500,000. I'm not doing it. Well, yeah. Maybe, and then, you know, maybe you, a million, maybe a million five, but not, not. And then that loss, that, that Packers loss has to make it sting even more. That, that, oh yeah. <laughs> that that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to rethink it. Should have went for the Kansas city tickets. Oh, well. Hey, you know what's you know what's a tough place right now? Up in the air. Supply demand imbalances continue to vex air cargo. And this is a big turnaround from what we saw back up until I think May of last year when air cargo was down 40%. But ever since then, it's been on an upward trajectory. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so uh, Eric Coulter reports the new year is off to a hot start uh, uh, for air cargo market with no sign of cooling off. International transportation activity typically softens following the holiday peak season, but the latest consolidated statistics from World ACD and Clive Data Services on December showed air cargo volumes only contracted 3.7 to 5% respectively uh, compared to 2019. And the figures show that uh, how far the air cargo industry has recovered, like you said, since uh, the 40% drop. Uh, the thirst for air transportation is heavily driven by continued inventory replenishment. 
uh, with inventory to sales ratios near record lows for consumer goods and the saturated ocean container market also bringing ancillary pressure onto it. Port and rail congestions, as well as a shortage yeah. of empty containers, bringing more demand on that uh, air cargo as well. Yeah, average rate soared 80% in December, in December from that $1.80 per kilogram to three twenty seven dollars per kilogram, the highest year-over-year -year increase since May, but then tapered off 10% entering January. That was according to World ACD. Read Eric Kulish's yeah. four report on FreightWaves.com because we got to get to our guest. It's Greg Johnson. He's the COO at Zimbles. Greg, thank you so much for joining us today on What the Truck. We appreciate your time. Hey, guys. Great to be here. Thanks for the time. Great. Yeah, absolutely, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. This is your first time on the show, so introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah, so uh, work in the uh, in the world of data and analytics. So a data geek, been a uh, in the sales side of things and operations, but more sales for gosh knows probably more than thirty years. And I'll, I'll stop counting at that point because then that'll really age me. Um, but really uh, excited about what we've built now with Zembles, you know, bringing the world of data and technology to the sales world. And uh, aside from that, I got four daughters and two grandsons and a dog and another dog on the way, and just love uh, love being active. So <laughs> that's the other side of things. Well, awesome. I can't help. I can't help but notice the big foam, uh, the big foam finger behind you. Who's who are you rooting yeah. for? That's just I'm rooting for my sales teams all day long. Oh, the, but this weekend I'm cheering for Brady. I'm a New England guy, so you know, hey, love me or hate me, I'm a New England guy. But I'm cheering like hell for uh, for my Brady and my Gronk. There's no doubt about that. So. No, I gotta, I gotta give him a little cowbell, Michael Vincent. I'm, I'm a yeah. uh, mass hole myself. I'm from the Boston area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, doesn't make us bad guys, does it, Tuner? No, <laughs> it doesn't. Go Tom, go Tom. Give us your best, go <laughs> Tom. Go. <laughs> Get a cheer for the elderly sometimes, given my status is uh, is just slightly ahead of him. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. So, hey, so talk a bit about Zembles. What is, what is Zembles? What are you guys doing over there? Yeah, so Zembles is a uh, is a great technology tool, one of the best I think to ever hit uh, the world of sales, at least in a really long time. And uh, being as involved in sales as long as I have, we kind of got tired of of hearing about all the problems everybody had with prospecting and getting to the best prospects quickly. And we decided to do something about it. So we applied our knowledge and experience and the data that we've got to the problem. And, um, and brought Zembles. And ultimately what Zembles is doing is for a sales rep, they're able to quickly and efficiently and accurately, more important than anything, find the best prospects, people that are spending on the things that matter to them, transportation. And we, we crush it. We've been working in the transportation space for more than 25 years, and we've got loads of data and incredible technology. And we just pointed it straight at one of the biggest problems that's facing sales these days, and that's prospecting. Yeah, I mean, I was I was in sales and logistics before. I spent a number of years doing it, and so much of my time was tied up not just in prospecting, but also like teaching myself how to prospect. And in the dark ages of 2015, all we really had for global trade were like port liquidation reports that were served through a couple of different companies. But it's still a ton of time and a ton of research to really figure out who your your key target is at the company, if this is really a value target, if their decisions are being made in the Northeast. All these kind of things. So, how does how do you guys ID the high value targets? Yeah, so uh, great, great question, and it's interesting because if you think of the consumer side of things, you know the world has become so good at figuring out when to hit us with things. Heck, they can they can track us when we walk by a store and give us a coupon, right? Just because of our cell phone. But the data about businesses has not kept up, and we as salespeople have been continuing to try to do the best we can and try to refine our own skills, our own eyes, and just kind of be able to see what we can do. But the difference is when you've got incredible amounts of data, more specifically unique data, right? And, and technology to add to it, then you can do all kinds of crazy analytics and, and you know, call it uh, eliminate the need for filtering because we're able to analyze a business like you would analyze a person's DNA and say, hmm, based on what I'm looking for, how can I find others that have that same DNA sample? And for us, it's all about verified spend. We got $1.7 trillion worth of annual B2B spend, and it's broken down across 45 categories, the most important of which are nine categories of transportation and shipping spend broken out amongst carrier and fleet. And by looking at that, it's not intent, right? Intent would be like my, uh, would be like, be like my uh, New Year's resolution. Doesn't mean I went to the gym, but if you know somebody spent and it's verified, I know it's there. And by looking at the entire supply chain, I don't even have to know there's LTL because I can see all kinds of other patterns that'll tell me that there's LTL. 
which are the leads that we've been walking by for years as we we drive around looking for loading docks and or you know trying to find uh, big square buildings on google maps and things like that forget it stop stop searching you don't have to be yeah. good search anymore let's hire great sales people who love selling and empower them with tools to do what they love to do i don't like searching right i don't like fishing i like catching <laughs> we're in a pond with fish i want to catch them don't take me out fishing i have to sit there and work ain't gonna happen <laughs> You mean you don't want to go back to the days where you, you walked into the transportation manager's office and when we got coffee, you stole the invoices off his desk to figure out who he's using and where he's spending and shipping his movie? Is, is, yeah. Either that or you do it when you got to the to the, uh, to the uh, receptionist and you look at all the people that signed in before yeah. you, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. absolutely. So so this has got to be good for brokers, right? I don't got to run around and, right. and, and look in the back to see what carriers are back there anymore. Tell us about absolutely. that. How's it good for brokers? Yeah, yeah it depends. Like you can, I mean, depend on how specific you want to get. You can find those people that are are doing exactly what you're looking for in terms of shipping, right? You can find I could identify a flatbed, right, um, easily by looking at other things that they're buying. If maybe they've got TL spend, but in addition to that, if I see that they've got things like industrial equipment or building supplies like lumber or pipe or steel or wire, pretty good chance it's an open open trailer, right? So. That helps me identify then real quickly the businesses to go at. And all I have to do is type in the name of one company that represents either my best customer or a known best prospect. And then I'll get all the others that look like it instantly. Right. So no filtering, no computers, you know, that you have to worry about. It's just call them, call them. They'll pop right up in front of you and you can start dialing. I always say, you know, you start dialing, don't try to analyze them. Don't try to decide once you see it. Just dial. And if it's not a qualified prospect, send me a good note and I'll Venmo you 10 bucks. <laughs> but, wow. But like every time you get one that is a qualified prospect, you Venmo me 10 bucks. That sounds too fair. That that sounds too fair. <laughs> I was going to start texting, but then I heard the second half of that. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's always a but. <laughs> well, well, Greg, this Thursday we have a huge event coming up. It's our it's our it's our free sales and marketing virtual event. I know that you're going to be there, and I am reuniting. Uh, put that coffee down with the original cast just to host this show, and I know we're going to have you on. Put that coffee down. So. You know, we're talking about leads here. Leads are great, right? You went fishing, but now how do you cook the fish? How do you bring them home? So you got the leads. Do you have any sales advice on uh, on landing the accounts? Yeah, you know what? It's uh, one of the things is once you know that they need what you're selling, then it's not a matter of focusing on one person, right? I mean, no matter how big or small the business is, there are all kinds of other users or influencers, people that you can gather information. And if you have more selling time because you're not just chasing dead end leads, then you can actually have more, more well thought out, well planned, well executed sales campaigns. And my, my best advice is try to understand everything that's going on in that business, right? Look at research, just having Zemmels has it, but I guess it's a little bit self-serving, has all kinds of information on news, the news you were reading at the beginning of the, uh, of the segment. You know, it's, it's great to have that information, but understand your customer, understand their unique challenges or opportunities right now, because I'm telling you, as we look across every industry, there are some that are absolutely thriving as industries. And within those industries, there are those that are doing well and those that are doing poorly. And some of the variables affecting that are huge. So knowing your customer, to me, more valuable than ever. And this you know, tool frees up the time to be able to do that. As I said, just focus on selling, not searching. I like that you mentioned news because, you know, we had the big news, too, about TFI buying UPS Freight. Yeah. If I'm a sales guy right now, I know that my freight's moving with UPS Freight. I know that I got customers who are now going to going to be, they're going to have a little anxiety. Who's moving my freight now? Is TFI doing it? It's a great touch point. It's a great touch point if you have some process in your system and you, and yeah. you know these big, it's, big it's, events. Right. Anytime there's something like that that goes on, there's chaos on both sides for the UPS side and the TFI side. So if you're not UPS or TFI, I look at that as opportunity for everybody, right? I, I look for look for change because change creates chaos and question and creates opportunity for, for everybody. So um, it's exciting for both those organizations, but I think it's exciting for everybody else as well. So people who want to learn more, where do we send them to? Uh, go to Zumbles.com. You can sign up for a free trial there. And um, you can uh, just send a, a, there's a little form fill you, you plug in. It's start.zumbles.com, I guess, is where you go. And um, we'll, we'll get right back to you and set you up with a free 48-hour trial. and Give it a shot. Better to, to say, hey, try it and prove that you like it than sit here and tell you, just go, go try it. It's worth a shot. Sure.
Hey, Greg, thank yeah. you very much. And uh, I'll see you in yeah. a few short days at the Sales and Marketing Summit. We'll catch you there. Take it easy. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Have a good day, guys. Thanks, thank Greg. You. You know, now we're going to take a trip right down to Atlanta, Michael Vincent, where uh, there's a $43 million man down that way. It's Ryan. I believe he's, <laughs> like he's the CEO of Relay Payments. Ryan, did I get your name okay? Uh, that will work. Okay. <laughs> no, I want to get that. It's, it's Ryan Drogi, but uh, I would say that one out of a thousand people get that right. So you're, you are good. Yeah, it's a tough call on the hard G when you're just like, when you're reading it sight unseen. I lean into that one. I want to give a big shout out to, to Monique Crapper, who helped set this up. She said, I love your podcast. I come from a farming family in Australia and discovered your show when I started at Relay a few months ago. My dad and two trucking truck farming brothers back in OZ have been tuning in and find it fascinating hearing about the U.S. perspective. So awesome to hear that people all the way on the other side of the world are hearing this and, and being influenced and uh, ending up working at Relay Payments, too. That's right. Monique's great. She's awesome. So um, tell, tell us what Relay Payments is, because you guys just had a huge raise. Linda Baker covered on FreightWaves.com um, in the beginning of the month. So what's Relay? And uh, yeah. Sure. So we are an electronic payments provider for the logistics industry, and we help replace carrier and brokers' reliance on cash or check. So I was just listening in and heard Greg uh, issue that Venmo challenge. One easy way to think of us is you know Venmo for carriers and brokers. We help uh, do electronic payments for them. Great. So if you want to take Greg's challenge, go to Relay Payments and you guys are going to That's right. up on yeah, the we'll, we'll facilitate the uh, $10 transaction back and forth. We'll help you move that money. <laughs> that's that's awesome. So tell us about the raise, man. What is the experience like going through a raise funding over this last six months, right? You're doing everything, I guess, through Zoom and everything like that. How, how, how did it go? Congratulations, by the way, on securing the $43 million. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it, was a, it was very interesting. Yeah. A lot of our investors, we never actually met in person. Uh, we would do the fundraising and the pitch and all the uh, financials over Zoom. So lots of Zoom calls, lots of meetings. A few of them did fly in and make the trip. And we had the socially distanced uh, meet you in person kind of boardroom meetings. But um, it was unique to say the least. Uh, it does speed up the process, right? You're not having to fly around to New York and San Francisco and Atlanta and try to raise all this money. You can do everything remotely pretty quickly. So we were we were fortunate with that case. Yeah, I got to ask you a question in terms of payments, because I think there's always a perception that the reason that people aren't getting paid is because, you know, uh, the, the client is withholding money. Um, but a lot sure. of times in, in logistics, it's because the, the back end, you know, accounting room is just kind of in disarray. They haven't digitized. They don't really have a process to it. So how receptive are your partners at being about adopting this? I mean, obviously, truckers are going to love it because they get paid quicker. Yeah, that's a, you're exactly right. The disarray in the back office is really a lot of the problems. And so I think what's been unique is you know, given the time and just given this transformation that's taken place during the industry, um, a lot of companies are focusing inwards and they're saying, what can we do to operationalize and increase our efficiencies and profit margins? And a lot of times the, the back office is a place that they can do that in. And so, uh, you know, we come in, we partner with them and really streamline that whole process, all of the business workflows, all of the money movements, uh, and it really brings money into the truck driver's pockets, right? And they can get back on the road quicker, which you mentioned. But uh, for the whole organization, it helps streamline their processes, which gives them increased uh, profit margin as well. Excellent stuff. So uh, when we were talking about the raise over the last year, last six months, that's difficult. But something else that interests me as well is is onboarding and bringing in new people and hiring new people and training them. And you grew from what, from four, like tenfold, right? From four to 40 employees over, over the previous, the last year. How is that? What were the challenges there? Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, you know, so early on in the year, we were forced to go to a remote company. And around that time, we had four employees in and around Atlanta. Uh, and we're at uh, 56 as of lately. So we've definitely you know, 10x the company and all of it has been over Zoom uh, and remotes. So I think conversations like this where we can call in and really be anywhere in the US uh, has been pretty cool. The way, the way that I tell everybody is this is the first time in history where you actually have the ability to work with people anywhere in the country. Uh, businesses were always constrained to hire talent in and around where they are. Uh, and so it really gives the opportunity to for us to bring on the best team members, regardless of where they are, regardless of where they live. Um, so we had to adapt quickly uh, and now the whole company is remote and we've got people in uh, six different states around the country. Wow, so what are you gonna do with this big cash infusion? Yeah, 43 million, is it burning a hole in your pocket? It sounds like a lot of it is just going towards beefing out the team. 
Yeah, a lot of it's hiring. Uh, you know, end of year target 110 team members, so we're hiring in a lot of different positions across the company, um, but also just continuing to serve our customer base. So there's a lot of innovation that the whole industry needs when it comes to these payments. If you think of how many transactions today are still done via cash or fleet check, uh, you know, we look to streamline that whole process. So working with the back office, working with the uh, the drivers on the road and the carriers themselves to actually bring that to market. And so that's what the capital is going to continue to go, go towards. Excellent. So are you, you going to, you're going to take a little bit of that and buy a big, a big office building there in downtown Atlanta when, when you can bring people back or are you going to stay remote? Yeah, it's a good question. So we'll, we, we will support a remote first culture. We'll probably buy a medium sized one. So some that, uh, you know, when people can fly in and have team events, we'll have an office space, a headquarters, if you will, in Atlanta. Atlanta is great. It's the hub of a lot of uh, you know, financial technology companies as well as logistics companies. So we're excited to make it our home, but also excited to welcome team members from around the around the whole continent. Now, is this similar at all to to RoadSync, or what's your why behind the company? Why did you decide to start this one? You've been very successful with it. Yeah, it's a good question. So um, you know, I was previously a co-founder at RoadSync, and what we what we did there was we were a merchant acquiring company for warehouses. We helped them keep track of their cash, keep track of their checks, deposit them. Uh, so more of like a point of sale type company. And, and through that, I really said, hey, there's a, there's a whole bigger need here for the industry to just replace the reliance on cash and checks. And so moved to the other side of the coin, if you will, and started helping the carriers and the brokers and the shippers uh, really replace their reliance on cash and checks. So two sides of the same coin, uh, both trying to fix payments in the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when in my, my in the past, uh, I, I remember trying to convince uh, uh, drivers to accept uh, online payments or, or you know, uh, direct deposit of their of their of their payments and stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm wondering if we I can't ask you a stupid question here. What, what's the one thing that you should always pay cash for? It's a, I, I'm not going to answer that on uh, on live uh, radio. <laughs> but there are some things that uh, when you follow the money, they should probably remain in cash. You don't really want any records of some of those purchases. So we'll we'll leave it at that. If you feel the need to bury it somewhere in your backyard in Atlanta, like Arkansas Mo's, you should probably pay cash for it, right? Is yeah, we're not a... we're not going after that market. That's not one we're going to talk about. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> So how big do you see you guys see yourselves? You know, you go to investors, you get the 43 million, your your plan right now, get up to that hundred some odd employees. Where, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? What is the growth trajectory looking like? Sure. So I mean, some back of the envelope calculations, there's still $30 billion that moves across cash and checks in the industry. Uh, and so we're handling about 300 million of that today. So there's a lot of forward momentum that we can continue to help companies modernize their back office and their payment process. So and yeah, we're just getting started. Have you gotten some feedback so far from uh, from people who have started to use Relay? Yeah, you know, people love it. Once they make the transition, they start saying, hey, this is what we were looking for for the last 10 years. Um, they're pretty excited once they're off of cash and checks. And we really help drive more, you know, more profits back into their pockets. And so at the end of the day, our customers rave about us. We get a lot of referrals. So we'll continue, continue trying to serve the industry. Wow. Well, excellent stuff. We really appreciate it. People want to learn more. The, these drivers out there, they want to get paid quicker. Uh, carriers want to fix their books up and get and get cash flowing more, uh, you know, more efficiently. Where should they go to to learn more? Yeah, RelayPayments.com. And uh, you can click Get Started Now. We have people who get up and running within an hour. Fantastic, man. We really appreciate it. And congratulations on your success with a new company. Love seeing a Southeast company bring it home, you know, especially when you're, you're hearing all this talk about, uh, you know, San Francisco, right? All the, all the tech companies okay. just kind of right now we're hearing about Austin. We're hearing about Tampa. You want to sell them on Georgia for a second? Yeah, we're excited to prove them wrong. You know, you can build a great successful company here in the Southeast. And uh, I think the thing that we proved with this last fundraise is the money doesn't really care where you're located, right? You know, our investors came out of San Francisco and New York and Atlanta. So they'll rally, they'll rally around a good company regardless of where you are. So we're pleased to have them join the team. Fantastic. And, you know, good for all of us, too, who want to work for startups because you, now our options are so much more open, especially if you, you don't want to take the risk of going to work for a startup in a place like in a market like San Francisco where it's just so expensive. Like, yeah, you may get a sure. good salary. But is there stability there? Who knows?
That's right. So now that, you know, funding is all remote and hiring is all remote. You can really work anywhere. Uh, so pick a good problem and go after it. But we got we got lots coming. So we're excited. Well, congratulations and uh, best of luck to you and your team. Thank you. Appreciate y'all having me on. Thanks, Ryan. Take care. Hey, coming up next, we're going to have a guest playing at four. But before we uh, before we have him come on, let's play his clip and we'll hear what what Jose Socorro has uh, has dropped down for us. This is an encore from him. He's been on once before last year playing at Ford. For those of you not familiar, play it forward segment we have here. If you're in supply chain, you've got the talent, you can play an instrument, but we're also open up to other things. You cook really well. Maybe you can do some magic. I don't know. Let us know. If you're a talented person in supply chain, reach out to me, tduner at freightwaves.com, T-D-O-O-N-E-R, and uh, we're happy to, to book you on the show, but let's check out what Jose sent us. Very, very lovely. But by the way, Michael Vincent, before we start talking to Jose here, um, James Fry and Arsh Deep are having a uh, they're getting a pretty deep in a conversation here about what's going on with brokers and what's going on with the spot market. Um, and, you know, I had someone reach out to me after last week's show too, saying, you know, the national I, th I think it was on the um, DHL supply chain pricing power index. It was 285 was the national average. But I've had people reach out to me and say they're getting well, well below that in their markets and they're you know, that angst against brokers is starting to percolate up a little bit. Do you know what, what the spot rate, the spot market is going to be at this week? It does seem like it might be trickling down a little bit. Spot market is definitely tricking down a little bit as, as uh, you know, outbound tender rejects throughout uh, the country are, they're still trickling down, uh, Duner. They came down another, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 or so or 100 or so uh, basis points. So they're down almost to 20%, which is one in four, but it's still off of, what was it, 22.5 or something last week. So it's dropping still a little bit and outbound tender volumes still pretty stable, but uh, yeah, there's much there. There's less and less pressure on on spot rates. There are still some areas where things uh, are tightening a little bit and kind of watching those, but um, definitely a downward uh, trend right now on, on spot market. There they're not being any massive pressure to rise. That's for sure. Okay, well, it's time to say thank you again to our sponsor, Zembles, and the frustration of chasing dead leads and start using Zembles data. Zembles will get you to the companies that are spending on trucking and logistics so you know where to focus your selling. Go to start.zembles.com slash free trial and sign up for a demo today. But now let's talk to Jose Socorro. He's transportation supervisor at Central States Manufacturing, Inc. Jose, thank you for joining us and thanks for playing it forward. Where was uh, where were you playing that sax at? That was at a Christmas production at church uh, back in December. And I got to relive a dream of mine being the careless whisper saxophone guy, Sergio Flores, and walk around and entertain people and get pictures. So I was the, the best thing for that whole weekend. And so it was a pleasure to serve and pay it forward. That is very cool. How long have you been playing the saxophone? For how many years? Over 10 years. Over 10, Over years. 10 years. And what is that a tenor sax or what is it? Tenor sax, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My daughter played the uh, tenor and the uh, what is it? Uh, is it a baritone? Is that it? The the really big sax, yes, you the know, baritone sax. Yeah, it's like four feet tall or something crazy like that. <laughs> That's pretty big, but hey, so, so, you know, somebody, so, you know, they were we were just talking before you came on here. People were asking about the spot market rates and that type of stuff. What what's freight looking like from uh, from your view of the world, right? So you're uh, tell people a little bit about yourself. Your transportation supervisor at Central States Manufacturing, is that right? Yes, sir. Thank you. So at Central States, we deliver our own product. Uh, we're a metal component manufacturer. We have 10 locations all over the United States. I manage the uh, St. Peter's, Missouri plant. So we pretty much have material to deliver as we grow and we're looking to tap into doing backhauls. 
that that will for sure be a challenge and a conversation that I can have with you guys once we get there. Uh, we haven't done too many back calls yet. We're still barely under a year old. We'll hit a year in February as a plant. So don't have on that, but here in the next few months to a year, I should be able to tell you better for sure. Yeah, Jose, you know, you made a big switch in uh, in the past year. You were at Big Big Carrier. You're with uh, J.B. Hunt, right? And you go over to Central States Manufacturing. You know, a lot of people listen to the show are in supply chain, and, and some of them think about career moves, either going to, you know, going to a mega carrier um, from a smaller place or from a, a, a mega carrier down to some place a little bit smaller or in a slightly different market. What's the experience been like for you? How has that shift been? It's been a good transition. I mean, there's a lot of things I did at J.B. Hunt that I am in a way doing at Central States. I am still working with uh, third party uh, carriers to negotiate rates on certain uh, loads that I need delivered, especially metals, since we need that to produce and deliver to our customers. So the, the broker life chose me, I didn't choose it. So I still have that mindset when I'm negotiating rates and going with what carrier I wanna decide to do business with. But I think the bigger picture is more ownership and more understanding of DOT regulations and guidelines and making sure your drivers are safe. So at JB Hunt, you have a department that handles safety, insurance, claims, uh, maintenance repair. At Central States, I'm having to manage and upkeep with uh, repairs, uh, make sure the drivers are complying with their DOT guidelines and any issues that come up on the front line. So that's the big change going from a big a corporate carrier to a more smaller uh, particular uh, company with the logistics department. Yeah, your perspective definitely changes a bit. I've never made that switch myself, but I, I can imagine that it's it's completely different when you're on the other side as the, the shipper side. Um, uh, but specifically when you make that change, you, you've got to present a little, a, a, a different uh, leadership skill, a different set of uh, perspective or philosophy there. Can you talk to us a little bit about that as what, what leadership means to you and how did that change when you made that change? Absolutely. Humility and making a lot of changes that you saw that the lights turned off. So I turned it back on. I think the, the first one is going to be active listening. Uh, the drivers I have, they're a great group. I'm fortunate. They teach me something every day. They're teaching me whether it's DOT, whether it's driving, whether it's equipment. Uh, active listening is the biggest thing. And you would think being married for a little bit, I would learn that. But uh, unfortunately, I'm still learning that every day. <laughs> the biggest thing is uh, realizing don't take it personal. Even if they come off with, with a snark or an attitude, uh, the drivers are always teaching me something new every day. And so with that, I have to be less on the offensive side and just listen and receive and then uh, take action. So that's the one part, it's uh, active listening, but then the servant leadership part, making sure you're doing your part to make sure your drivers have everything from, you know, tires uh, upkeep, uh, tr uh, truck and trailer fix repairs, because it can get pretty complicated with equipment issues and your drivers are not happy with the current situation uh, with their loaner and all. So I would say active listening would be the biggest takeaway uh, for leadership. Jose, I have an audience question, and I'm going to get to it in a second. It's from James Fry, who also says he plays bass. James Fry, just DM me. I'll have you come on the show. Let me, uh, you can play it forward with us. But it's time for a stupid question before we, uh, before we let you go and oh, give out yes. your contact information. When you eat penne, we tell a lot about a man from this one. When you eat penne, do you slide your fork through the tubes or do you stab right through it? It all depends. If I have a really nice shirt on like I do today, I probably will slide. Ooh. Okay. And and by the way, I'll give you guys a shout out. I was able to get a great carrier to work with from the last interview we did. So shout out to you guys for paying it forward and helping a brother out. Yeah, sure. Stupid question. Uh, move business. <laughs> so are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Vincent, how are you eating your pasta? You, 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 I, I imagine you just stab right in there, right? You know, you're not all dainty like that, putting sliding on yeah no floor. no when i first met my wife i was definitely sliding it being dating but it went straight to just stabbing <laughs> it and shoveling real quick oh it, and like those first those first dates where you're just trying to not seem like a total slob yeah exactly yeah yeah that's right like trying to eat a salad without you know looking like an yeah. idiot it's not yeah, uh, picking up like a pig and just just troughing it that's that's <laughs> <laughs> exactly Straight soup straight out of the bowl. You guys in the comments, how are you eating your penne pasta? I think a lot of, I, I bet a lot of our listeners, if I had to bet right now, if I had to put my 10 Venmo up, I would say that they're, uh, that they're stabbing right through. Nobody's got time to just slide on the fork. But anyways, oh, yeah. Jose, 
Jose, James Fry wants to reach out to you. Maybe another carrier does as well. Where should they go to learn more? Well, they can reach out to me via LinkedIn or they can hit me up at jsocorro at centralstatesmfg.com. Excellent stuff. Hey, man, I appreciate your I appreciate your time today. Thank you, guys. Take care. Take it easy. Thanks. All right. Now, Michael Vincent, this is uh, this is a relationship. Oh. Remember, we, we read that article about uh, what was going on with the charities. The virtual, they were having, they were struggling because everything had moved to a virtual world. And then, you know, we reached out to Shannon Courier. We've been talking to St. Christopher's ever since, and she's back with us today to talk about a couple things: their goals for the year, and also uh, what they're doing about diabetes. So, Shannon, thank you so much for joining us on the air today. We appreciate having you back. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm trying to get my screen set right. Um, yeah, so we had um, some huge goals that were met in uh, 2020, and we uh, had set this very aggressive goal to reach a uh, million dollars in fundraising, and we did reach that goal. And I have to thank Woo! you guys, because every time I come on here, we seem to get uh, more attention than we had before, and we have people reaching out to us wanting to donate. We have people that are signing up for monthly donations. So you all are certainly helping us um, reach and maintain our goals. So look forward to working with you all in 2021 as well. Well, first of all, a little cowbell for that, but also a little cowbell <laughs> for our audience. This does, you know, this only has very little to do with Michael Vince and I. It's, it's it's those of you who are listening and then taking some action afterwards to go and help out for those for the person who's turning in for the first time they maybe they haven't heard of truckers relief fund um just give a little background on what you guys do set the table yeah so absolutely we're a 501 c3 um charity for truck drivers we only work with over the road class a cdl drivers so if a driver has an injury or an illness that takes them off the road they can apply for assistance with us and we can step in short term and pay necessity household expenses um, our focus is very limited so we can only cover rent or mortgage, utility bills, vehicle payments, or insurance premiums. That's all that we can pay for. But we do have hundreds of other resources that we can give drivers um, to get some additional assistance above and beyond what we can do. On top of that, we also offer health and wellness initiatives that we hope will help drivers have a healthier lifestyle. You know, they're out there sitting on the road a lot of hours of the day. So we have things like a program called Rigs Without Cigs. That is a smoking cessation program where we help drivers quit smoking. Um, we have health challenges where we encourage not just weight loss, but more movement throughout the day, drinking more water, eating, you know, better, choosing better options out there on the road. Um, we also have a free vaccine voucher program where drivers can get free flu, pneumonia, and shingles vaccines. And then this year, kicking off February 1st, um, we have a brand new CDC approved free diabetes prevention program. Again, this is for class A CDL over the road drivers. So we wanna help drivers. We see a lot of diabetes on applications, a lot. And so this was something that was very dear to us that we wanted to say, hey, this is an area we can step in and help drivers make some changes. That's great. So, uh, so tell us about that, that uh, dry, what, it, what is it called? Driving down diabetes. Can you tell us more about that program, how it works, how people get involved? Yeah, I can. So if they go to our website, it's truckersfund.org and click on the health and wellness tab and you'll see driving down diabetes or diabetes prevention over there. Click on that. And there is a, um, a, a form on there that you can fill out to get registered. You can also take um, a little test, a little questionnaire to see if you are uh, on the verge of being pre-diabetic. And so what we're trying to do is get ahead of the diabetes diagnosis and help drivers make some changes ahead of time. So hopefully they don't have to face diabetes because diabetes takes drivers off the road. So that's one of the reasons that this is important to us. You know, we want to make sure drivers can stay on the road make the money that they need to make for their families. But we also want them, hopefully, so when they retire, that they're going to retire healthy so they can live the rest of their lives with their families, kids, grandkids, um, you know, friends. They can travel, do those kind of things. So we want drivers to be healthy, not just now, but for the long haul. Yeah, Shannon, no and I, I, don't, I don't say <laughs> oh, I thought, oh, there you go. There you go. I almost missed my boot too. <laughs> no, I don't mean to, I don't mean to like downplay COVID or anything, but you know, because it's, it's, it's so much in the, the forefront of, of people's consciousness, we can't forget about things like diabetes. And you have some shocking facts over here, which is that 88 million Americans have pre-diabetes and eight and 10 don't even know they're walking around with it. 
That is correct. There's a lot of people that they're not going and getting checked for it. So it's one of those things that you really have to be preventive about. You have to be proactive in going to your doctor for those regular checkups, getting that blood work done to see where you are. So if you don't catch that early enough, you know, the next time you go in, you're really going to have some health issues that are going to send you to the doctor. Then you're going to get that diabetes diagnosis. So we're trying to prevent that. We're trying to get it on the front end. Um, so we're all, we're going to recommend anybody that signs up for our program, go and talk to your doctor, get your initial blood work done, see what your A1C is. You want to know what that is going in if you can. And then, you know, by the time this program is over, it's a one-year program. We know we didn't get our bodies in the shape they're in overnight, and we're not going to get them healthy overnight. So this is a one-year program. So it does take some commitment, but we're in it with you for the long haul. You're not going to be doing it by yourself. We're going to walk with you weekly to get this done and to help make changes. So, so we'd love to have people sign up and get on board with us. We'd love to have, you know, healthier drivers out there. And we're, I'm not, I'm preaching to me too. I'm not preaching to anybody. I'm, I'm preaching to me too. So I have lots of changes I need to make as well. Yeah. Everybody needs to try and be healthy. Right. I mean, like you said, Duner, you don't want to downplay COVID or anything like, but, uh, but isn't diabetes one of those things that make you more susceptible to the a worse symptoms of COVID, right? I mean, you've got to try and stay healthy. And I would imagine, I, I don't know that much about di diabetes. I get my blood work done. I don't, I don't have it or am I pre, but are drivers more predisposed to, to this because of their lifestyle? Is that, is that why the, the drive for this with drivers in particular? Yes, that's absolutely correct. You know, the, the um, more weight that you have on you, the worse it is. Um, food choices, diabetes can be controlled. Um, I won't say easily, but easily with food choices. Um, so getting you in the mindset or getting us in the mindset to make those food choices, um, either plan ahead of time, you know, if you can, if you have cooler on your truck, if you have a refrigerator and freezer on your truck, planning ahead, taking meals with you on the truck that can be cooked versus eating, you know, the fast food that's in a lot of um, the fuel stops that you might come across. And, and there are better choices out there in these fuel stops. And that's some of the things we'll talk about too. You know, we are aware of what's available in the, in the fuel stops. So we're going to talk to you about, hey, if you have to eat there, choose this and not that, you know, choose the better choice. So there, there's going to be a lot, you know, it's a year long program. There's a lot that's going to go into this. So Shannon, what's our goal for 2021? What are you trying to hit? What Give us a number. Well, we got to celebrate 2020 and meeting a million dollars for about five minutes. And then it was off running in 2021. So our new goal is 1.1 in 21. So um, we, we want to beat our $1 million goal. And, you know, we, we had such generosity shown to us uh, in 2020, even in the midst of COVID. You know, it was one of those things where we set the, this aggressive goal before COVID ever hit. And then when COVID hit, we were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Shows were canceled. You know, we didn't have events to go to. So really, we were just blessed. People started you know, thinking about what are we going to do? Who can we help during this time? And of course, truck drivers were front and center. You know, if they're not running, we don't have any of the supplies that we need. So we really needed a healthy driver population um, throughout COVID. And luckily, for the most part, I feel like we've seen that. You know, we really thought we're going to get overrun with these applications. We're not going to be able to keep up. But honestly, that hasn't happened. And I think that's a blessing because we don't want to see, you know, a quarter of the driver population shut down. That's really going to affect a lot. <laughs> um, and so it, it's really been a blessing. They've taken care of themselves and people have made sure that we had the funds we needed to take care of the drivers that needed us. Now, Shannon, before we let you go, I'd be remiss without asking, what is your favorite piece of glassware behind you in that cabinet? <laughs> well, so my in-laws um, collect what's called high C glass. And so these are some pieces that they've given to us that are our favorites. And you won't be able to see it, but right here, there is a mug. It's a glass mug and it has an elephant for a handle. And I'm a huge Alabama fan. And so that is one of my favorite pieces because it's got an elephant. It was not for Alabama. It was actually for like the Republican Party back, you know, in the day. Um, but I'm claiming it. So... <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, Shannon, we <laughs> want you to meet your goal. Where do we send people so they can go and give you some money? Yeah, so go to truckersfund.org, click on the donate button. Um, you can learn all about us there. You can also shoot me an email, Shannon at truckersfund.org, or call the office. We'll be happy to get you connected. Um, we'd love to have everybody join our mission and to help these men and women behind the wheel and, and keep us going in uh, 2021. We still need them yesterday, today, and tomorrow. They're not going anywhere. So. Well, Shannon, thank you for being a friend of the show. We're, we're so happy you met your goal last year. And I guarantee you, well, I, I sort of guarantee you, audience, help us out. We're going to help them beat that goal this year. Shannon, take it easy. We'll catch up with you in the next quarter and we'll find out where you're at with it. And we'll, uh, you know, maybe we'll bring you back each quarter. You can update us on what's good with St. Christopher's. Sounds great. I would be honored to do that. Thank you all so much. Have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks, take Shannon. Care. All right, Michael. 1.1 and 21, Dooner. 1.1 1 .1 and 21. If we did a million last year, I think we got it. Right? In the bag. It's in the bag. In the bag. In the bag. It's it's it's, it's a little deal, right? Because you know we're we're going to be doing it if we because uh, I trust our I trust our audience. I trust the trucking community. You know we're we're going to hit it. But in terms of big deal, little deals, we're at that segment of the show. And uh, first sentencing has happened in this Louisiana stage accidents case. We covered it a few months ago on what the truck when we first heard about it. Um, but the sentence is less than two years. Is this a big deal, little deal? I be. <sighs> I, you know, I, I, it's, it's a little deal just, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but I think it's a big deal that it's less than two years. This person was the spotter, right? So it basically went out and found the scenarios where they could get everything to play out and, and stage these crashes and get the trucks to run into these other, other cars. Right. And they said he like, he's a lesser, this is a lesser conspirator or whatever it was. Uh, I, I, I don't know that there is a lesser conspirator when when you're talking about this type of stuff right I, I don't know my feeling is that it's a big deal because it should have been longer i think the yeah. max was like five years and I, I probably would go that way if i was the judge or the, or the jury is, is the max on something like this it's okay. crazy what's your answer what's that so what's your answer big deal <laughs> yeah big deal yeah 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 sorry big deal i like the lightning round we get a lot of these oh sorry should i just All like right. spit out my answer what's your what's your thoughts on there no, I want you to spit out the next one to me. Hit me with it. Oh, okay. A tanker driver was beaten with a pipe while trying to deliver fuel at a truck stop on January 21st at the Golden Spike Travel Plaza in Tre Tremonton. Big deal or little deal? I'll say what's a big deal is this crappy excuse. This guy, right? The guy who hit him with the pipe, they pulled him over like, uh, you know, a few miles down the road. And he claims that he may have hit the victim with the pipe as the individual was swinging at him with the elbow. Seems like a likely yeah. story. But, uh... I don't know. Stop being crazy out there. I mean, it's a relatively little deal. Don't hit people with pipes. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think it, yeah, he was complaining because the guy hit his pipe with his head while he was trying to walk by or something. Yeah. His head got in the way. I was just trying to hit the air. All right. All right. Here, here's one for you. And, you know, people have found pictures of like Christ in toast before, right? We see all sorts of things in the environment and we give them meaning. Well, a geologist found a, uh, a volcanic rock and he cut it in half. And guess what, Michael Vincent? It looks like Cookie Monster. Is this a big deal or a little deal? I'm going to go a third category. It's an awesome deal, dude. Check a look at that thing. It's awesome. I, I, I love it. I'm, I'm saying awesome deal, my friend. Yeah, you know, and those things just make me happy. I just really like, you know, make me psychologically just want a cookie after just seeing that out there. And apparently, <laughs> apparently this is a big deal if you are a rock collecting person because they, I guess they call these agates. And he said there's a few famous agates out there, like the owl, the sacred face of Christ. Man, I'll tell you too, these Quest cookies, it's like a Quest protein cookie and um, it's really dry. So I'm going to put that to the side. Um <laughs> And there's a commercial for you, folks. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe the negative commercial. They're not a sponsor. Uh, um, but I, I guess this for you. He's been offered ten thousand dollars for this rock. So big deal to him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely a big deal. Um, yeah, who, yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. I got one here, Dooner. This yeah. is more of a dream. This is more of a dream come true for you, uh, more oh. than a than a big deal, little deal. Beijing is now testing for COVID-19 using anal swabs where the virus may survive longer. Big well, deal, little deal. Coming well, to a town gonna, near you. It's going to make uh, drive through testing a lot more exciting, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, it definitely will. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, yeah, I was, I had, I had not a COVID test until, I mean, like, I don't think I was, I didn't need to take one. I wasn't put at risk until 
December when I was going to go to Boston. I didn't want to bring like COVID to my family. Now I've had a bunch since then, but like I was kind of nervous because on the news they made it seem like it was painful or discomforting or something. It's it's nothing. They just stick it up up your nose. But if they told me they were going to stick it in, stick it where the sun don't shine, I don't know. I'd want to get to the bottom of that one. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know if you've been following this. I don't know if you've been following this crazy world of meme stocks, but game stock surged as much as 55% on Monday. And it's so wild. I've been watching it on Robinhood. At one point, it was up to like $153 and it fell all the way down to 88. It's moving back up. But what's happening is a uh, a forum on Reddit, a, a subreddit called Wall Street Bets, has decided to start targeting shorts. And one of them is through what's called a meme stock, which is GameStop, a company that really should never have this real world value. But what they're doing is manipulating the market by forcing um, they have the highest short position in the market people did with GameStop. So they're forcing all these short sellers to, to have to buy in and cover their losses and buy more and more as all these Reddit traders keep lifting up. And now GameStop stock went from like $4 a couple of months ago to over $100 today. You think this is a big deal or a little deal? I, I think it's, I, I like this type of stuff, <laughs> as a matter of fact. So I'm going to say, I think it's a big deal, and I think it's about time somebody did this. I think, wasn't there a movie called Ruthless People or something when Danny DeVito did this like all day long? This is just his job. He'd wait and look for a bunch of short sellers, and then he'd drive the price like crazy up and try and put them out of business or something. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, look... Here's the thing. I mean, it, you, it it's, it's fitting that it comes to Robin Hood because you kind of have to like that the shorts are the ones getting hit because they're the ones rooting, rooting against companies. They want people to fail. So for them yeah. to now have threat lurking all the time of Wall Street bets coming after you, I don't know. You know, the, <laughs> maybe the market needs that sort of own uh, sort of personal regulation by just knowing them retail traders are out there. And one day they yeah. might get you. I kind of think about it. I kind of love it. Yep. 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 All right. I got, I got one for you. So uh, I know you're not an anti-vax or anything like that, but you know, we know there's a lot of people out there that are like not going to take the COVID vaccine. They think it's been rushed too fast, whatever they're thinking is there. So a Michigan uh, marijuana dispensary is going to, they are now giving away free weed. And I'm not talking about the, you know, less than 3% CBD oils, free weed to anyone who gets the COVID vaccine, brother. What do you think about that? Big deal or little well well, it just makes me have questions. Is it like a sativa, an indica, a hybrid? What's the THC percentage? Is it CBD heavy? You know, what strain is it? Do we have some choice in saying it? You know, now, uh, you know, you've perked my interest a little bit. I want to see what you have. Because uh, yeah, it's, you it's the- Afghani two hit wish is what it is. <laughs> it's that Cali Kush, man. Just go and get that vaccine <laughs> in your arm. <laughs> um, but jump here to the front of the line because, like, it's not like vaccines are, it's not like flu shots where we have a ton of them and it's just like we have all this inventory sitting around now. We just need the arms to put them in. I mean, if, if yeah, someone was offering no. me right now, I'd go get it. But I've checked the Tennessee Health Department thing and uh, I'm still a ways off on when I'll be eligible. Yeah, you can't go get it. I mean, if this was, if they were doing it down here, we'd have a bunch of 75 year old and uh, medical workers that are walking around getting stoned all the time. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It would help us out much right now. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, a lot of people are trying to find ways to lure people in, to lure clientele. I can see a business wanting to do it, too, because you keep employees safe if you have more vaccinated customers coming in. So I can see the logic behind it. I know, um, like, the dollar store was a Dollar Tree. They were offering to pay people four or five hours worth of pay for for going to get a vaccine. So people are just trying to find ways to to motivate people. And, uh, you know, the new thing we're hearing now is the thing you and I, you know, could see clear as day was going to happen. And that's, they're having trouble getting the second dose into people. And like, that was like the most obvious thing. Oh, is that what the issue is now is trying to get the second dose into people is the issue. It's becoming an issue. Yeah. It's becoming an issue. Although, you know what, with vaccines, with vaccines, we actually did really well last week. We got to over 1.1 million a day last week. So getting that hundred million in the first hundred days of Biden office um, may happen before there was, people were a little critical because uh, we were supposed to have 20 million by the end of the year. We only got to about 12 or 13 million as of last week, but it seems like some of the kinks are finally being ironed out. If you want to iron the kinks out of your sales process, sales and marketing event, January 20th, live.freightwaves.com. Kevin Hill and I reuniting the band, put that coffee down for one day only. We'll be hosting the thing. Tons of great events, including with Zembles. Who you heard earlier, Wednesday on What the Truck, Matthew Matola, co-founder and CEO of Venture L, author of Changemaker. Um, he's going to talk about how to position yourself as a freelancer, not getting trapped in that gig economy, and maybe looking how to start a side hustle in freight. We're trying to give you a lot of tools here to begin at the beginning of the year. Wasa Munier, president of Munier Group, he's going to talk about finding a new role in the remote world. You know, we talked to uh, Relay Payments. He said, you know, a lot of our staff is going to be remote first. So this creates a ton of opportunities for employees out there with all these companies going remote. Now, you don't have to move. 
move, but you can still look for more gigs. You can cast a much wider net. And Mario Palos Pawalski, he was just at Virtual CES. He'll tell us uh, everything that is cool. Subscribe to the What the Truck newsletter, FreightWaves.com slash WTT. It is free. It comes in your inbox every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Follow me on Twitter at Timothy Dunn. That's D-O-O-N-E-R. Follow me at Vincent the Dude. Subscribe to the show, What the Truck, favorite podcast player of choice. What do you got to say, Michael? Peace and love.